It's the Basement 1F Halloween Special, featuring special appearances by Dr. Terramine, Count Orlok, Bigfoot, Pinhead, and more. And now your hosts for this spooky spectacular. They're the reason you'll enjoy the spooky season. Mitch and Scary Sally. Happy Halloween, dwellers, and welcome to the spooky season special of Basement 1F, where the trick-or-treaters get the king-size candy. We've got a few fun surprises for you, but first, has anyone seen Sally? Behold the Maiden of Mayhem. The Queen of Damnation. The Giver of Bedtime Stories. Enter, Enter, Master, Enter Sally. Master Sally. Slavia. Arise, minions. Behold, Ghost Night, the Witch's Sabbath. The night where the occult and the monsters can stalk the streets and shake down normies for candy. Well, it's good to see the whole cult leader thing hasn't gone to your head. And it's good to see that you still suck at costumes. What? I'm Sean from Shaun of the Dead. Don't act like you don't wear that shirt like every day. I do, but I'm also wearing a name tag. And what about you? I thought I'd see you in some sort of crazy ass costume that'd get us ripped off the air. You wish. Normally I... Um, guys? The big entrance was all I really had slated for you. Why don't you guys go back to the lair and pass out the candy I prepared? Okay. No problem. The candy tasted sharp. Normally I'm costumed out big time, but I gotta think of the circle first. Noble, I think. Look at the research, Mitch. Halloween is the top night for cult signups. Fun fact, second place is Earth Day. Happy Halloween, you basement one effers. Hiya, Doc. What do you normally do for Halloween? Turn off my porch lights and go to bed by 8 p.m. So, typical evening then? Now, you two. I believe I have a film that you need to review. And remember, you did say it would be a Halloween movie. And don't give me any of that Halloween town technicality horse shit. I want Michael Myers. Why, you cut me to the quick? Do you really think I would lie to you? I mean, you do. A lot. Pish posh. For your big special, you will indeed be reviewing Halloween. Oh. Well, in that case... Six. You rat bastard. <laughs> Enjoy Halloween, the curse of Michael Myers. A film so convoluted that even Paul Rudd couldn't save it. Chow, losers. Shut your mind out. I've said it once and I'll say it again. He's a dick. But we're not going to let him damper the Halloween spirit. Too true, Sally. We'll tackle that review of Halloween 6 a bit later on. But first, Lumpy has a video he's been working on. It's all coming up right after this. Do you like swearing? Occasional nudity? Or rift films and shorts? Then patreon.com forward slash basement 1F is for you. See all our videos without those pesky bleeps and bars. I know, right? And it exclusive rift shots only on Patreon. It's only $3 a month. Think of all the times Sally can say in that time. Hello, Basement 1F. Happy Halloween. And see you in theaters this December when you see Nosferatu. Based on me, of course. Okay, turn off the camera. All right, ghouls and degenerates. Welcome to the Basement 1F Halloween Candy Showdown. I'm Lumpy, and tonight we answer the only question that truly matters this season. What's the best Halloween candy? Is it something spooky? Something sweet? Or just something to rot your teeth until you look like a jack-o'-lantern? I think the answer is pretty obvious, Lumpy. Baby Ruth is the king of Halloween candy. Chocolate, peanuts, whatever the hell nougat is, it's the perfect candy. Yeah, but Baby Ruth doesn't come in gummy form, Mitch, so that's your first mistake right there. Not to mention, Baby Ruth is just a Snickers bar born with fetal alcohol syndrome. But if you're talking the best, nothing beats candy corn. It's classic, iconic, and delicious. Delicious? Candy corn tastes like someone scraped a candle out of an old jack-o'-lantern and thought, hey, I know how to ruin Halloween. You just can't handle the goodness, Mitch. But if you can't appreciate the beauty of candy corn, watermelon and Sour Patch Kids will do the trick. They're like a punch right to your taste buds. You'll need it after all that candy corn. I like a good Sour Patch. The tang, the way it makes your tongue feel like it's gonna split open. Reminds me of back home in the sewer. It's Halloween and you're eating wax and gelatin? The true Halloween candy is Almond Joy. It's got everything. Chocolate, coconut, almonds, it's awesome. And when I need to switch things up, Milky Way is my backup. Also, awesome. Shadow, you eat like a middle-aged suburban dad. And you smell like a zombie's vagina. Too much chocolate talk over here. Give me Smarties, Nerds, or Pixie Sticks any day. It's like eating little bits of pure sugar magic. It figures that you'd be the type that goes straight for the candy that's basically angel dust for kids. Judge me all you want. I've got a sugar rush that'll power me through editing for days. But gummies are the real Halloween MVP. Gummy worms, gummy bears, Sour Patch Kids, gummy fingers, gummy eyeballs. You can play with your food before you eat it. It's win-win. But what do you think, dwellers? 
What's your favorite Halloween candy? I'd say tell us your least favorite, but we all know it's that hard-ass bubblegum. We'll be right back. Hi, uh, Basement 1F. I'm taking time away from a killer ab day to wish you and yours a good Halloween season. Hope your holiday is raw. Super raw. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. It's the movie in the franchise that decides to explain Michael Myers' strength and the whole not dying thing. Remember how we were all asking for that? Me either. The movie picks up six years after Halloween 5. Michael Myers has been missing all that time, but now he's back, like a case of herpes. But this time, his niece Jamie is pregnant and on the run. Yep, that's right, Jamie's pregnant, and Michael wants her dead. And get this, the baby might be Michael's. We never really get a clear answer, but it's hinted. You know, I didn't think Michael could get any creepier, but here we are. Especially since the last time we saw Jamie, she looked like this. Yowzer. Then we meet Tommy Doyle, played by Paul Rudd. Yep, Ant-Man himself. He's obsessed with Michael, watching his every move. You see, Tommy survived Michael's attack in the first movie, and has grown up into, well, kind of a weirdo. Paul Rudd? So we get an awkward, pre-charming Rudd in this? That dude never ages. Mm. Oh yeah, he's intense, real paranoid, and real weird. But he's basically our main guy trying to stop Michael. Sucks when your only hope is the guy slightly less creepy than Michael. Of course, Donald Pleasance is back as Dr. Loomis, choosing this film to do his best wizard impersonation. Let the feast begin. A wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. Michael was a monster, but you... And here's where it gets kind of weird. So it turns out Michael isn't just an unstoppable force of evil. No, he's actually under the control of a Jurassic cult called Thorn. They've cursed him to kill his family as some sort of ancient ritual. A cult? As leader of Sally's Sinister Circle, I've got to say, this one sounds fucking weak. All right, because your cult is so much more professional, huh? you damn right. First off, my followers know how to dress. No weird hoods, just classy red robes. And we don't make our members do ridiculous things like try to kill their entire family. We want more followers, not less. T dumb chodes. So, we finally get to the big climax in the hospital. Phrasing. Shut up. No. You've got Michael chasing everyone down doing his usual unstoppable routine until Tommy Doyle, yes, Paul Rudd himself, beats him down with a lead pipe. Wait, that's it? After surviving bullets, explosions, and fires, Michael Myers is finally taken down by a pipe? Yeah, apparently that's enough to stop him, but only for now. Of course, there's a lot of weird stuff that happens in between, but that's pretty much where it ends. Hmm, not the worst way to end it, but after everything Michael's been through, a lead pipe seems a little underwhelming. Well, there's a producer's cut where they take him out with runes instead. Never mind, pipe beating is better. So, Halloween 6. It's definitely one of the stranger entries in the franchise. The cult angle didn't really add anything scary. If anything, it just makes Michael Myers feel less threatening. It's like they wanted to give him a reason, but ended up making him seem smaller. And if you're going to use a cult, it should at least make him scarier. Not like a little bitch. For real. Look, if you're a hardcore Halloween fan, you might want to check it out just to see how bizarre it is. We couldn't stop you anyway. But as for us... We don't recommend it. It's just too much of a mess. To put it into perspective, the next film is Halloween H2O, and that film ignores parts 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, you can skip it. Unless you're really into bad cults and confusing plot lines, this one is better left forgotten. Or at least buried under some lead pipes. Maybe he has an aversion to lead. Like everyone? Man, this movie sucks. Never too late to join a good cult. Not happening, lady. We'll be right back. If you would like to show your support for Basement 1F, then get a hold of our Basement 1F logo shirt. Glad Lumpy is back? Then grab his Mara Horror t-shirt. Only $18 a shirt. Have some merch already? Send us a pic and you could be featured in a future video. Basement1F.com. Join the dwellers. Happy Halloween, mortals. May your suffering be exquisite and your trick-or-treating be endless. Hello? I'm in hell. Please save me. Who let you out of the paper cut room? Well, dwellers, it has been a killer night of Halloween fun. Hang on, Mitch. I got a little surprise for your Halloween present. A present? But I uh, didn't get you anything. I know, you're the worst. But as a Halloween gift to my co-host and resident slasher superfan, 
I thought I'd bring someone very special onto the show. You've been wanting to meet him for a long time. So, Mitch, I give you Jason Voorhees. Holy shit! <sighs> oh, for the love of... <sighs> yeah, I saw that coming. Um, Miss Sally, we passed out all the candy and I'm bored. Well, go watch TV with Todd and Shadow. They said that they were going to bed and I should go bother you. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But meet Jason Voorhees. Uh, hi, Mr. Voorhees. Ah! Ouchie, Just, uh, ouchie, 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 dirt on it, ouchie. Kevin. Uh, who's wearing my shoes? What, what happened? Did I faint? Like a little bitch. But check it out, Jason ripped Kevin's arm off. <laughs> oh, uh, Sorry about that. He's your biggest fan, I swear. Actually, can I get you to autograph that arm for him?